So I've made a few videos that go in depth when it comes to creating a virtual machine instance. Um, for those who are not too interested in spending, you know, the next 40, 50 minutes going through all the different options when it comes to creating a VM, I'm going to go ahead and create a quick video that sh will give you a quick overview on how to go ahead and get started with creating a virtual machine on Compute Engine. A lot of it's pretty intuitive, um, but I'll go ahead and try and explain the bits that will probably need to be explained. Um, but if you want an in-depth video, please check out the, the series I created on creating a VM instance. It is quite long and it synthesizes a lot of my um, knowledge to this point of reading the docs and kind of experiencing and playing around with the Compute Engine. Without further ado, let's get to it. So on your Google Cloud console, navigate to the, using the sidebar and head to Compute at the bottom and go to Compute Engine and select VM instances. So this is the first time creating a virtual machine. This should be an empty screen for you with the ability for you to either import or create. So we're, we're going to go ahead and create. All right. So the first important thing to notice is that we have three columns of information. We have um, either the ability to create a new virtual machine and apply our own custom configurations, use an instance template, which can be applied to several different machines, or use a, go to the marketplace and use some ready-to-go solutions that have been provided by trusted vendors. On the far right over here, we're given a price estimate that depends on the different um, components for a virtual machine. Certain resources may cost more, um, some may cost less, some may be more available and therefore cost more, some may be less available and cost less. So there are a lot of things that may change the, the pricing um, of your VMs. So typically we'll go ahead and give a, a virtual machine a name. Let's say we're making a WordPress instance, WordPress VM1. You can name it whatever you want, but be consistent with it because um, inconsistent naming will come in and bite you in the back later on. We can go ahead and select the region and zones. This select The selection of a region is more important than you typically think. It's not about really about just where you're going to throw your instance. A lot of things like latencies come into effect, things like regulations of where your data is going to be stored and where it's going to be processed comes to effect. So, and also Google only has certain resources in certain regions. So um, wherever you choose to have that virtual machine, just know that perhaps a database, let's say like Firestore or data store that you may want to use may not be available in that region. So latency may increase because you may have to look at a different region. Zones are just simply um, the different parts of your data center. So regions are, can be thought of as data centers. Zones are just your different parts within your data center. And when it comes to creating a compute engine VM, um, you get to create them in different zones. So a VM can be allocated to one particular zone. One thing to note about pricing is different regions also have different prices. So what you find is, um, at least from my experience, South America is the most expensive and US Central is typically the least expensive everything in between like Asia and Europe tend to be in between, especially Europe. So you can play around with that and kind of figure out what you want. Once again, you have to figure out, Hey, where are my, where are my customers? Where are my resources? Um, I'll need them close. Do I need them close together? How can I balance out price versus latency? Those are organizational decisions you need to make. All right, cool. Machine type. This is where I like to go crazy, but I just don't have the money. So obviously you have to create one that fits your budget, but also meets your requirement. Once again, it's a battle between latency and performance against price. Um, you can go crazy and create, uh, um, so let's select a region that has a very insane, uh, machine type, like your central, you can create a machine that has 160 vCPUs and almost four terabytes of Ram. This is, this is unbelievable stuff, but yes, you're going to pay for that $12,000 a month. And that's after the sustained use. So if you use it consistently for 30 days, nonstop, you will get $5,000 of discount. Otherwise, it will cost you about 18000 Man. Anyway, let's drop it down to something reasonable. One vCPU, whatever it is. Within the machine type, you can get to customize the ratio between cores and memory. But remember, increasing this will change the pricing. So one thing that's important to notice about regions is certain regions give you a set of configurations that can work with certain things like CPU platforms. So for instance, um, if we're in Taiwan, we get to use Skylake, Broadwell, and Ivory Bridge CPU platforms. But if you go to Mumbai, well, we only get Skylake and Broadwell. So regions are important once again, right? Let's drop that down to something reasonable here as well. All right, cool. GPUs. Once again, GPUs are also regional resources. So in Mumbai, for instance, you cannot use GPUs. Let's go to somewhere more compatible like US Central and uh, we get the chance to use uh, GPUs. Um, once again, GPUs are related to the number of cores you have. So the more GPUs you have, the more dies that you have to use. So the more cores you have, the more the minimum number of uh, GPUs you have to use. So the minimum number kind of increases just a little bit. So now we have to use at least eight of them. And GPUs are not cheap, as you noticed. We're using eight um, NVIDIA Tesla K80s. Um, we'll have to pay about $2,000, $2,600 a month. Um, if we use, let's say, the virtual workstations, I have to select that. Not only is it more expensive, but now I have a grid license fee that I have to pay. One thing to know about GPUs, these are not your typical 
uh, GPUs that you go and buy for your desktop, like your GTX, whatever it is, 1080, 1070. You know, these are optimized for cloud operations in data centers. So um, they're highly performant and still can do pretty much all the same workloads that you typically use at home. But these ones are used, these ones are typically meant for use with large CPUs, large workloads that are high availability. All right, let's return to our basic view and let's select something a bit more sane. Otherwise, I'll totally destroy my pockets and let's get rid of all those GPUs that we chose to use. That's, that's a lot better. All right, boot disks. Boot disks are simply uh, the selection of 